they're doing it online. Thank you. 
Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless, bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to take taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah of the Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He serves at the evil by teaching the crowd all Judea, from Galilee to where he began to do this work. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. 
Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away, away with this fellow! He for for us. us. This was a man who had been put in prison <coughs> for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say in the morning to the mountains, Fall on us and on the hills, cover us, for they will do this and when the wood is green. What will happen when it is dry? Two others who were also criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he said, let him say himself that he is the Messiah of God, the Son of The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, I am not the Messiah. Save yourself But the other rebuked him, saying, You do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence as condemnation, and we indeed have been broken unjustly, for we are made to observe our enemies, but this is the end of the sentence of God. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the temple, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. 
Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Several years ago, my wife Beth and I had the privilege of taking a trip to Israel and the Holy Land and seeing the sites there guided by a local church. A life-changing trip that culminated in three or four days in Jerusalem. And one of the many sites we saw there was the Church of the Holy Sepulchre which is built over the spot where we believe Jesus was buried, the tomb, and of course from which he was resurrected. And also, just a short distance from there, also in the church complex, the site of the cross, at least what we believe were those sites. We can't be entirely sure, but as people we need a place to see and touch, don't we? So naturally, we're drawn to that. In the epistle reading this morning, Paul draws us back to the cross. And I found when I went into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that a number of people were near the tomb and a number of people were in a worship service. And by the way, we had been there the prior day and the crowds were just overwhelming so we went back at 6 a.m. there were still a lot of people there but I also noticed that there was no one at the site of the cross they were at the tomb or they were in the worship service <clears throat> Paul draws us back to the cross as he can be counted on to do over and over again you heard it read just before the Passion Gospel. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Just one of many of the times that Paul reminds us it's crucial to keep our focus, to keep the cross at the center of our faith. The passion and death of Jesus is the climax of all four of the Gospels, including, of course, the one we heard today. And the cross is the focus of Palm Sunday. There's a reason for that. That's put there just in case you don't come to the Good Friday worship. We want to make sure that you hear the part about the cross before Easter morning. I think we have some difficulty with the cross. At least I know I do. The cross, frankly, is appalling, isn't it? It's violent. It's painful. It's gruesome. Years ago, you may have seen the movie that came out, Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. 
And that showed Jesus' crucifixion in stark terms, pretty realistic. I found it hard to watch. And I think it's safe to say that the real thing was even more gruesome than that. We prefer Easter, don't we? Easter has lilies and trumpets and, and victory. The cross is hard to face because it's about suffering and death. But I'd like to encourage us this Holy Week, just the same, to remember to linger at the cross, not to let it go by too quickly. Why is that? The cross is full of meaning for us. There are many theological explanations. You've heard them all. Uh, the cross is the place where Jesus makes the sacrifice for our sins. We call that the atonement. It's a place where Jesus pours himself out in loving humility for us. It's a courageous example of Jesus' obedience. In the garden, he prays, Father, take this cup from me, and yet, not my will, but yours be done. And then he walks the walk <clears throat> all the way to Golgotha. We know that in the cross, Jesus justifies even the ungodly, the unrighteous among us, and can't we all identify with that? Every person who wants to come is welcome. Jesus is calling out to each and every person who has ever lived. And coupled with the resurrection, the cross means victory over death and new life in Jesus. That's a lot of theology, isn't it? Is your head full yet? Mine is. And I find the older I get, the faster this fills up and the less it holds. These explanations are important. They're true. They're, they've been worked out carefully. They're right. But they're a bit abstract, aren't they? So I'd like to make a suggestion for us this Holy Week, and that is not just to use this part, but also to remember to engage the heart. It may be a new way to see the cross. The cross is sacrifice. It is blessing. It is victory. But it's more. It is also Jesus saying to us, I love you. And there's nothing I won't do for you. There's no suffering I won't endure for you, no degradation. I won't take on myself for you. And that teaches us that he's present with us, even in the darkest moments of our lives. I love you, he says. I want to be with you. I will go to suffering and death for you. The cross boiled down to one word is love. And love always attracts our attention. Years ago, I was helping out at a worship service at another church, also called St. George's, by the way, and we were preparing for the Good Friday liturgy. And there were a number of people there, maybe 50 or 60, it was a larger church. And the rector told me that he was going to use a part of the Good Friday liturgy that they never used before. They were just going to bring in a wooden cross and give the people, invite the people to take a moment to come forward and just spend a moment in front of the cross. And he said, well, I didn't ask them if they wanted to do it. I'm not sure how it will go over. I'm hoping maybe one out of ten will, will actually come forward. And as that liturgy unfolded and the time came, every single person there came up and spent a little time at the foot of the cross. 
it's one of the most uh, meaningful uh, memories I have of Holy Week anywhere. The cross calls us, doesn't it? it calls us to linger. Calls us to ponder what it is that was done for us. And to accept this extravagant love poured out for us. Might be a little uncomfortable, might take a little effort, but always worth it. Here's a little prayer that might help. Help me, Lord, to understand your cross. Help me to accept this love that's offered to me and help me to respond in my life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our worship now continues with the prayers of the people. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace.
Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being cooperative this morning. <laughs> Very different. You know, I just don't get nervous, except when things are different. Just so you know. <laughs> One of those mornings. Uh, welcome, everyone. A special welcome to uh, Father Chip um, Strickland. There you go. <laughs> Father Chip Strickland, welcome. Thanks for the uh, timely meditation on uh, the meaning of the, of the cross as we enter into Holy, into Holy Week. Um, be sure to read your, your uh, bulletin announcements and also uh, check us out on Facebook and uh, take note of this week. Uh, Tuesday, we have the healing service at 1210 right and then afterwards uh ward is going to uh lead us in some meditations with music so maybe more than the usual crowd will want to be here uh for for that uh healing service and music meditations then monday thursday with foot washings and then good friday and then we celebrate with uh, all the stops pulled. I'll be disappointed if we don't pull all of them, you know, real loud and uh, joyous uh, Easter morning. And we can bring out all the uh, hallelujahs and, and, and stuff. Yes, and Jennifer, and? Monday, we have Mary's Way of the Cross. Yes, I forgot that this so morning. So, all yes. the women, I think this is the first time we're going to have fellowship since COVID. Um, yes. The women gathering at five, and then all are welcome at six for our service. Is that like tomorrow? Yes. What time? Five for fellowship, yeah. six for the service. And if I, if you did not get an email from me, um, please let me know because um, I am trying to communicate. That. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes, and um, oh. Yeah, there's something else. I'm a, I got a new grandbaby this morning. So. <laughs> Anybody else want to enjoy that perk of making a personal announcement? <laughs> All right. Then let us uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. Thank you. 
things come of thee, O Lord. And thy the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith through faith. In your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven given for you. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Blood of Christ, the Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Thank you. 